Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to continue with the sci-fi helmet, with the ADEX project that uh, we've been working on. And uh, since, as you guys know, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is releasing today, so I'm going to be playing it um, uh, quite a bit during this weekend. Hopefully I'm going to be able to have some free time and, and enjoy it a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I do want to make sure that we try to get this one done during the weekend. We're kind of, I, I want to celebrate the game a little bit. Um, by doing this sci-fi uh, stuff. So we're going to try to finish with topology today. And then tomorrow and uh, and Sunday, we're going to be working on textures. We're going to be texturing the whole thing, uh, throwing in some nice renders in, uh, as well. But before we move on, if you're not going to be playing uh, Xenoblade's Chronicle 3 this weekend and you have some free time on your hands, then may I recommend uh, using one of our very nice promos here to learn a little bit more about 3D. This is, uh, of course, you guys know it, the Skillshare promotion. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There you go. So there's going to be a new course releasing in the next couple of days. It's a modular environment uh, course that uh, we've been working as on as a team, of course. And uh, yeah, so make sure to check that one out as soon as it releases. I'm already working on the next one for you guys. I won't spoil it just yet, but uh, it's going to be a fun one. So uh, this is what we have right now. And this is the sort of like the decimated version or not decimated, but this is the version that we're going to be working with. And I actually like this one because it's going to allow me to show you a couple of the things that we can do in regards to retopology. This first piece right here, this big helmet, there's no other option than uh, to do this traditionally. So we're going to do a traditional retopology. I'm a little bit uh, like bumped out by the fact that we have a little bit of a hole there. Uh, that's not what I wanted to have. And unfortunately, this has already been, as you can see right here, it's already been... Um, a boolean right like life boolean so there's not much we can do right here i mean we do have the poly groups uh so maybe maybe we can uh try and use like our move topological here or uh just like mask these things out and just like move this a little bit but it might create a couple of weird issues here and there let me see if i can fix it there we go that kind of looks like it's fixed and again there's a little bit of uh of something there we can definitely smooth it out i don't think it's going to be that much and, and that definitely closes the hole so so that that's good for us that i think that's uh that's more than enough and um so this one's it's traditional retopology there's no other way to do it um i mean there's of course other ways to do it but the best result will come from a traditional retopology process and uh we're going to be doing that inside of uh, maya so uh what i'm going to do here is i'm going to clone this guy right here and then we're going to decimate it because as you can see, this is at 1.4 million polygons and that's a little bit too much. So we're going to do Decimation Master pre-process current. For those of you that don't know about Decimation Master, Decimation Master is an amazing process that we have here instead of ZBrush that uh, grabs all of the information from a model and then reduces it by adding more triangles where you have more details and less triangles where you have less details. Uh, we've been working with this one for a long time now. By the way, I forgot to mention, we just hit 27,000 subscribers uh, in the last couple of days. I, I completely uh, like zoned out about that one, but yeah, we're, we're uh, right there. So thanks everyone for your support. Uh, the channel has been growing as you have seen. There's some more instructors coming on board. There's more topics, things that I'm not uh, super proficient at. Uh, they're gonna be covering it and they're gonna be sharing all of their cool knowledge about uh, those um, like pipelines as well. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Let me know. Is there anything like cool that we could do to celebrate 20, 27,000 subscribers? Leave me comments down here and I'll be happy to um, to take a look at them. So there we go. We've done the pre-processing and 20% uh, decimation is usually good enough. So as you can see, we've reduced this to 293,000 points, which is about 600,000 uh, polygons. And uh, pretty much the detail is still there. Like we haven't really like changed anything. So... So we're good to go. So I'm just going to export this thing. I've realized in the last couple of uh, like uh, works that I've been doing that uh, if we don't export this in the FBX, sometimes when you export this as uh, OBJ, it freaks things out. So my advice is try to always export as the um, FBX. So let's go eight assets and then we have the sci-fi right here. So this is going to be an FBX and we're going to call this ADEX. 
uh, helmet helmet underscore high there we go uh, just look a and that's it now we're gonna go back to the uh, to this piece right here to the original uh, mesh and uh, let's do the horns because the horns are one of those things that are very organic as you can see right here and they look quite cool we don't need this thing here in the center uh, this have not been decimated so one thing we can do is we can just delete all of these things right here like all of this information there we go because we're never gonna see that stuff right let's be very careful only deleting this thing right there Whoa. oh there seems to be like somewhere there we go something like that and i'm gonna say delete hidden and just dynamesh again uh, make sure to give everything a its own uh, poly group. There we go. So Dynamesh, and that gets closed. Again, we can just like very quickly smooth that out, and that's it. Now, again, since this are going to be some sort of like a glass things. Oh, careful there. Careful, careful. Let's go back a little bit. I'm going to turn on my um, uh, groups on my Dynamesh so that it only mixes things that are their own, like own subtool and stuff. There we go. So now that we have this, I am, it seems to seems to be some weird polygroups there let's delete those dynamesh again Ooh. there we go so technically we should only have uh, those guys right there perfect so what we're going to do is we're just going to use series measure because it's a very simple again organic looking shape so if we try series measure we should be able to get a really nice uh, effect and for this one so we're actually not going to have a um a high poly mesh it's just going to be the, the low poly and that's it i'm going to do half of this so let's series mesh again and uh, let's see where mesh again. There we go. So as you can see, this is our like nice topology for the horns. Again, we don't really need to do anything else. This is going to be our low poly. We're not going to have a high poly because we want these things to be like super polished, sort of like plasticky looking things. So again, we just go export. We're going to export this as ADAX horns. And again, we're not going to have this as high poly because that's it. Like we don't any need anything else. The only thing we need to do with this guys is get some nice UVs uh, out of uh, them. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So that's the that's the horns themselves. And finally, finally, we have this pieces right here, which if you guys remember when we did uh, this guys, um, they were very, again, very hard surfacey, right? So uh, one thing that I realized with this one is since there's such a simple shape, we could even just like read read or redo them is that the proper word yeah we can redo them inside of maya like remodel them uh but we can give it a try here with the uh with the, um, uh, the uh, remesher as well so if we try series measure the only thing i don't like about series measure is that even though it does try to to do it as you can see right here it creates some wonky stuff so we can turn on this detect edges option and try the series measure and see how it tries to again find it it should be fairly simple right like you you would think like this would be fairly simple to uh to series mesh i'm not sure if it's uh let's not do adapt let's just do series measure again it it, it it seems like a, such a simple shape to to retopologize automatically but as you can see it's it's creating something weird and i think it's doing it because things are not combined so one thing that we can do is let's try dynameshing these things first with a high subdivision, like 1024, let's just polish and say Dynamesh. This should give us a lot of resolution and keeps like corners very, very sharp. Keep them as a single piece, there we go. And now if we do series measure, since it's a single object, it should give us a better result. Again, it's not gonna be as perfect as going in there and like manually placing all of our uh, points uh, as we've done before and as we're about to do with the, with the full helmet. Yeah, and that's, it's, it's, not, it's not working. <laughs> it's horrible, it's horrible, it's not working at all. Uh, so unfortunately for this row pieces, it's, it's just way, way easier to just clean them nicely from um, uh, in, inside of, um, what's the word inside of Maya. So I'm just going to export this as they are. Let's call this ADEX ears. If you guys haven't seen the origin of this series, we actually grabbed like a random uh, animal and uh, we created this very cool uh, shapes with them. So there's this like, it's like a deer or something called an ADEX. It has like a neck on the face. Uh, we did some uh, thumbnails and stuff. Oh, there, look at that. I'm super excited. You guys can't believe how excited I am, I, I am uh, about, like, seeing the blades. I know I sound like a fanboy right now, but it's... Uh, I really enjoyed the previous uh, games. It's, uh, it's a really nice system. I love G JRPGs where, like, things are super complex and stuff. If you guys are fans of RPGs, I strongly recommend the series. It's a really good one. Anyway, let's jump into Maya real quick. Let me open the folder here. That's some of the work that we're doing. We're doing some machines, some BR stuff for a company here in Mexico. Uh, very, very cool project. 
ba, ba, ba. there we go. Let's go assets. The reason why my Maya takes so long to load is because I have a lot of plugins turned on, like the Substance plugin, Arnold, uh, like even some like Dynamics and stuff. If you remove all of those, I think I've mentioned that before. If you go here, Windows Preferences, Plugin Manager, and you get rid of all of the things that you're not using, especially the big ones down here, like a Mash and uh, Bifrost. Let's see, I even have Bifrost turned on. Like if you remove all of these things, uh, Maya will load uh, faster, but then if you need those things, uh, you will need to go there and load them in. So it's all about uh, what you prefer. So let's grab the ears, the helmet high, and the horns, bring them in. And uh, we should have this. Now, once we have our high poly, or once we have this pieces, now we can actually scale these things to like a better size, uh, because we're no longer gonna jump into Seabridge, like this is what we're gonna be working with. We still have a hole there. I don't mind it, but at the same time, I don't love it. So uh, we'll fill that one in with a nice technique that I'm gonna show you. Let's do Lambert one, there we go. So let's start with the ears, right? Because that's the like that's the easiest point. And uh, the way we can do this is very simple. We just go into our uh, live surface tool right here, and we're just gonna use our quad tool. So we're gonna do one there, one there, one there, one there, that's a plane. And then one there, one there, that's another plane. And I'm actually not gonna use the high poly for this one. And uh, I, I would like to challenge you guys to to visualize why that might be the case. Uh, but for those of you that just want the quick answer, the reason why we're not gonna be using the high poly is because as you can see, it has this very weird jaggedy edges, right? Um, that we inherited from either the decimation or just like the basic high poly. And that could be baked down onto an object. So since this is a such a simple uh, piece, it's very easy to create our new, or like a new uh, high poly version here. So we just need to like literally trace this thing because we're not gonna be using subdivision, right? Like we're not working with subdivision uh, with the subdivision uh, workflow that you would normally use for films. We're working with games. And when working with games, um, it's very, I find it quite comfortable because again, you don't have to worry about a lot of things that subdivision demands that you take care of. And then we can focus only on creating like good silhouettes. So we can, again, it's not, cheating kind of feels like it but it's more about just worrying about the silhouette so as you can see we're just going through all of the hard points here on our element to make sure that we have a nice topology we can definitely add some continuous continuous lines here so for instance there like i can definitely see that having one extra line right here is going to make my life so much easier so let's just add it now, technically, if you still have, uh, if you're following along with the series and you still have the original mesh that we used to create this uh, low poly thingy inside of uh, inside of uh, Seabrush, because if you guys remember, I believe we did use like Seamoller or something like that, uh, then we could like skip this uh, element, just export that piece and uh, and work with that. But I'm gonna use, uh, whoa, I'm gonna use tab, but I'm gonna double click here and make sure my extend is set to edge so that I can just extrude this edge all the way over here. And as you can see, we can just like, whoop. there we go. Something like that, let's close this. Let's see if Maya wants to help me here. If not, just shift, extrude this. And then just grab this point right here and bring it there, there we go. Again, no need to have like perfect flow of topology. The only thing we want to have is like clean, clean transitions between the the polygons and stuff. So like even like this super big shape that you're seeing right there, that's perfectly fine. Let's do this one right here. On this places, that's where extending the border is really cool. If you want to do, by the way, if you want to use um, Blender to your topology, feel free to use that one as well. I've seen some uh, comments, uh, who, who was it? I think someone on the on the lightning and cinematic um, uh, promo that we did asked if uh, you could follow those things along in the um, in Blender. And the answer is yes, not perfectly, right? Like it, it's not gonna be like a one-to-one -one translation, but the course, the, the cinematic lighting course, it's, it's very, fundamental heavy. So I talk about a lot of things that you guys need to understand about, again, cameras, lights and stuff. So as long as you can find like the, like the similar things that I'm talking about inside of Blender, you could follow along. Uh, you're gonna have to reconnect most of the textures though, uh, and the models because they are, uh, they were built for, uh, for Maya and for Arnold. 
uh, but it could be followed. Uh, a commenter on that video, you can go back and check. Uh, he mentioned is like, oh, you should re you should learn the real software, which is a uh, Maya. And unfortunately, yes, like Maya is still, I think, considered to be industry standard. Um, a lot of the big companies will continue and are using are using Maya and will continue to use Maya for the foreseeable future. Uh, we've had this debate before, right? Like, which one's better? It's not that any of them is better, but you need to, to think about uh, your uh, like current situation. Like, do you want to be uh, like myself? Do you want to have your own uh, studio and do your own productions and stuff? Then Blender is perfectly fine. And you're not going to have to buy, uh, pay any sort of like licensing or anything. It's, it's completely free, which is great. Uh, but if you want to work for like a big studio, then you're probably going to have to learn Maya because uh, more often than not, they are going to be using Maya. Right, so it's all about like knowing the market. Don't try to go against the current because that's when <laughs> uh, when you're gonna have your own uh, some some issues. There we go. So as you can see, uh, and as I mentioned, the ear is now uh, finished. So this would be my low poly, or this 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 could be the low poly, right? But I don't want this low poly because it's very sharp, and uh, usually whenever I do uh, any sort of uh, modeling, I like to add a couple of like uh, edge loops. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the borders of the pieces, all of these pieces. Let's make sure this flows nicely, there we go. Uh, this border as well. Perfect, and that uh, we're just gonna bevel. So we're just gonna add a bevel to everything, just like this. And as with the horns, this piece won't have a high poly, so we can actually delete this because this is what we're gonna see in the game. Just a very nice flat surface that goes um, along the, the lines of the design that we're following. Of course, we need to uh, mirror this on the minus X on the world, and that's it. So this is, I think, one of the things that I, it took me a while to understand when working on games. Not everything has to have a high poly. Sometimes if you have like a very simple shape like this uh, ears or like the horns, that's it. That's all you need. And uh, you're not going to bake anything. There's no details. You can add details later on, and we will add details on the texturing side of things, uh, but you don't really need to do that. Uh, now, this one's here has created something interesting. As you can see, the the um, the elements look horrible, right? How do we fix this? We're going to go to Meshes Play, Unlock Normals. That's going to like free any like normal information that we have. And uh, it looks very weird. And the problem is that, that like those like horrible things that we see there, those are going to be visible on the on the normal map. So I, I, I kind of want to try doing a a, a, a soften edge, but that kind of like defeats the purpose. Let's try a surface or sorry, mesh display harden edge, but I think it's going to solve some issues, but it might create others. No, actually that one fixed it. There we go. So that fixed the issue. Now, as you can see here, this one did not fix the hole on the other side, and uh, that's a problem. But it's not a big problem because we can just press Shift, right-click, go into Mirror. We're going to mirror on the minus world uh, axis, the 0 0.001 tolerance, and just hit Apply. And technically, all of the vertices that we have on one side are going to be mirrored to the other side. It's a heavy operation because it's really big. We could also do this inside of, um, inside of ZBrush to make this thing a little bit easier for us. Let's see if this does not crash. Hopefully it does not crash because I have not saved. And if we don't save, then we're going to have to do the ear again. Uh, but let's take a look. Let's uh, <laughs> let's hope for the best. Uh, let me pause real quick while this thing processes. And then I'll be right back. Well, so it seems like we asked Maya a little bit more than it could uh, actually do. And um, yeah, we're going to have to finish the process. Don't worry. I'm not going to make you guys go through the whole uh, process again. As you can see here, I'm just going to grab Maya and just close. There we go. So what I wanted to do was this one, which was the, the clean one. What we can do is we can, first of all, mirror it so that the closed hole is on this side and then just mirror and weld, which is the very basic function that's going to close the hole. And that's it. So we just export this guy again. Um, let's go to the sci-fi process and it's this uh, helmet high. There we go. Save this. Yes. Uh, yes. And let's open Maya real quick again. I'm going to do the ears um, off camera. Don't worry, guys. Uh, we're not going to go through that again. And I'm actually not going to show the whole retopology process. I'm just going to show you the principles of the things that we need to take into account when retopologizing this sort of uh, elements. Um, and mainly because the retopology process, unfortunately, it's really, really boring. So I hate uh, <laughs> I hate recording uh, retopology processes when, um, when it's just so boring. So let's bring in the uh, the elements. There we go. Let's make this bigger again, just to keep this even. Let's say like 10 
on the scales and uh, let's push this like 30 units up in case we need to bring this back so grab everything again let's reassign the lambert uh we have the same issue with the normals just mesh display and harden edge to make sure that all of the normals are like nice and hard uh, we definitely need to go mesh and the unlock normals so they behave properly and there we go so i'm gonna grab these two things get them into a layer hide them for just a second what the hell is this what's that I'm not sure what that blue line is. Just playing some chess games while waiting for <laughs> this thing to uh, resolve. Let me let me figure what this thing. Okay, I couldn't figure out what it was, but it's definitely coming from Maya. You can see when I close this, it's it's gone. But I I'm really not sure what that is. Anyway, I'm just gonna grab this thing, and I'm just gonna show you a couple of the things that we need to take into account when retopologizing. First of all, whenever we're retopologizing, especially these sort of things, you definitely want to capture all of these like little bubbles that we did along the way, right? So. All of these guys right here, we definitely want to retopologize. Now, don't worry about uh, triangles. Triangles are fine. I actually would love if this tool, the the quadra tool, worked with triangles a little bit better, uh, because it really doesn't like them as much. Uh, but yeah, they're they're totally fine. Uh, you don't need to have a super high density because we're not going to be deforming this thing, right? Like this thing's not going to be bending or anything. It's just a solid object. So as long as we capture the the silhouette, that's all we need. So for instance, see this piece right here. We have a hole. Remember how we've talked about holes and how uh, complicated it can be? As you can see, I can just like go across that hole like that, and that's all we need. In here, again, to keep it simple, we just triangularize that uh, like portion there, and that's it. Uh, this piece right here, we need to decide, do we want to have like uh, like that little hole right there? And if we do want to have it, then, well, unfortunately, we're going to have to go in there and actually create the plane there. I don't love doing that because that sometimes creates some issues with the baking process uh, because this is such a small area that sometimes you will bake things into each other. Uh, but we can fix that later on if we if we have that issue. Sometimes that's the part of the design and there's nothing you can do. Uh, you definitely want to try to keep the size of your squares as uniform as possible. And you don't want to add more squares than you need. That's also one of like very, very good rule of thumb whenever doing retopologization. Re is that the right word? Hopefully it is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's just a good principle, right, to, to try to cover this. So for instance, here on the on the border, you can see that we do have a little bit of a, of a nice bevel there. Uh, you definitely want to capture it as, as long as you can afford it. If, if we're not doing this for like a like a mobile game and we can afford having this retopology, then this is this is great. Sci-fi retopology or hard surface retopology is a little bit different than organic retopology. Because with organic, we have one very cool function. We've talked about this one before, which is the conform option, right? That we can just like um, do a rough approximation of the of the borders of the object and then uh, conform all of the vertices so that it follows the object very, very nicely. With hard surface, as you're seeing right here, we need to be a little bit more precise in where we place uh, our points because we don't have the conform option. So so that's also actually quite quite important. Like see this this round corner as well? That's those are the round corners that I definitely want to capture because I know that by having that round corner, things are just going to look way, way better. Here, I'm going to show you a nice little trick for, for like this corners right there. Like this. There we go. See how we create that little box right there to kind of like hold both edges. That way we don't have to insert any more like extra edges everywhere else. So this is what we're going to get. And, and those little borders, like that that extra little like bevel that we're adding on the retopology process, those are really, really good for catching light. They're go they will catch like small uh, like hits of light on the object. And, and I can actually show you this uh, right here. So remember that my app, like technically this thing that we're seeing is like a real time renderer, right? So if we have this cube, you can see that this face is like darker, slightly darker. If we add a light, that's going to be even more obvious. So let's add like a like a directional light and let's press number seven. So as you can see, that's giving us the typical like light, semi-light and done the dark areas of an object, right? Uh, if we add a bevel uh, to like the top parts, for instance here, what's gonna happen is that that bevel is gonna catch a little bit of that light and it's gonna give us a little bit more volume. We're gonna make it look quite nice, especially if the object has a material such as a bling, which is gonna like shine a little bit more. So when we start rotating this thing and we get some specific areas of the element, we will get that like very, very nice, uh, like um, extra little light uh, effect. So especially again in sci-fi stuff, you definitely want to have that in mind. Uh, of course, since the element here is uh, symmetrical, 
we don't have to do both sides, we just have to do the, the main side. And this little triangles right here, if you've uh, watched my um, hard surface modeling uh, course for, for Maya, I use that technique quite a bit in the in games. It's even like more useful here for the retopology process because that way we don't have to carry all of the resolution from one point to another. So again, it's just a matter of uh, following the, the form of your object and making sure it matches. Whenever you have this like interesting pieces where things are going one way and the other, just think about like stripes, like how is this thing gonna flow into this thing? So for instance, this guy right here, like this is the main like a visor thing coming from from this side so i know that this thing is going to eventually hit this point so try to move the point so that they're as close as possible to the intersection right there and then i know that we're going to have another square like flowing in this direction right like it's very obvious so how do we solve this well if you can solve it with a square then you're you're good to go just like start moving this square as you can see right here kind of making it flow in this uh, upper side and then where where you need a triangle for instance right there things are getting a little bit tricky a triangle would definitely solve the situation and that's it we just keep going and again the reason why we can do this is because this thing is not going to deform we're not going to bend it or anything it's just a solid object solid helmet so this is going to allow us to keep things um, like nice and tight in those areas you might have like smaller uh squares because you need like a more complex silhouette the more complex the silhouette or the more more busy the silhouette is the more retopology that you're going to need on those areas now for this areas right here this is important uh we don't need to cover everything so in this case if we just do like a big square right here that's going to cover everything as you can see right there so we don't need to go in there. If you want to go there and, uh, and do the retopology, then be my guest, but it's definitely gonna take a little bit longer. And uh, this thing right here is more than enough to, to hold that information because when we project the normal map, um, it's gonna look towards like the bottom and top part of the face and it's gonna find that information. Same for like this huge detail right here. I can see the, the silhouette of this uh, big piece. So we can follow the silhouette, but we don't go inside the detail. We try to keep it outside of the detail because this face is right there. They're going to be flat and they're going to be catching all of that information. So, yeah, that's it, guys. As I mentioned, I'm going to be working on the retopology for this thing. Again, just another uh, quick, like, a demo for, like, this, like, elements right here. That's it. That's all you need to do. All that, like, that face right there is going to capture all of those slots in the, in the normal map. And it's going to look really, really nice. Uh, oh, yeah, one more thing. Like, how can we close that little thing right there? Well, let's keep it simple. So, I'm just going to grab a sphere. Let's turn this off. Let's make sure this is zero. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to use this sphere. Like a cylindrical sort of sphere to follow the shape there. As nice and as clean as possible. It's just kind of like a hole. There we go. <laughs> that should be more than enough. We can scale this a little bit more. I'm definitely going to give this a couple of smooths. So I'm going to say mesh smooth like a couple of times. And then these two pieces, we just combine them. And it's pretty much like adding a different piece. So uh, again, the, the one thing I don't love and, and we won't be able to fix this because it's uh, it's a little bit complicated here. I don't love all of this like huge space that we have in between the elements uh, because again, we, we have to re all the way down and then re all the way uh, like forward. And unfortunately that creates a couple of issues. So actually let me, let me go back before we combine this thing. There we go. And let's see if we can like bridge this things in a nicer way. Even if there's a little bit of overlap. My dog is eating something and I'm scared of what he's destroying. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and look in just a second. Yeah, like this sort of stuff. There we go. I mean, I don't love it. Looks a little bit weird. But again, it's on a, on a part of the character that we don't really see. So we can get away. Uh, I don't know. It looks a little bit weird. I mean, I kind of like this sphere right here, but then there's this like holes over here. Another thing we can do is just grab like a couple of cubes. Let's do another like bevel to the whole cube, two segments and a small fraction. Remember how we filled some of the holes on the design itself. So you can just sort of like repeat the same, repeat the same process here. Have a little bit of overlap there and that closes it, it definitely makes the silhouette a little bit more complex but at least it doesn't look like super obvious let's mirror this on the uh positive x there we go and that's it so that way we we have something interesting go going there there's definitely going to be a little bit of extra work on the retopology process there 
Uh, but we're getting there. So yeah, that's it, guys. I'm gonna stop it right here uh, with this like uh, intro to the to the retopology that we have. And uh, on the next video, we're gonna be talking about the um, the texturing process. I'm gonna show you a quick UV technique, and then we'll jump onto texturing with substance. So hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.